The region is really nascent and uh, the maturity of the industry is really at the basic level. We are at the beginning, uh, not at the end or even in the middle of a transformation of the overall television landscape in the Middle East. Uh, some of the things that have played out in uh, more developed markets like North America or Europe are just starting to occur here. So we are in the first of 11 innings to use a baseball uh, terminology for a moment. Um, and uh, we're just starting to see the first foundational partners arrive and the first moves being made that will shape this industry going forward. Uh, what do I mean by that? Look, I, the, the, the move towards uh, a digital distribution of premium video is unstoppable. Uh, the benefits of digital distribution are simply too much and too high and too compelling for linear distribution in the long term to really continue to make sense. Of course, television is going to stay powerful, it's going to stay around, it's not going away, and there will always be markets and audiences that want linear dis distribution of premium video. But the addressability, the two-way interactivity, the trackability, the measurability of IP-delivered IP premium video is simply so attractive uh, to consumers and to providers as well that naturally everything is going to uh, evolve into that direction even in the Middle East over time. Um, a few things are, are going to happen. One access to the internet is going to get uh, wider and deeper and more affordable. Uh, we're seeing new technologies come uh, into play such as 5G. We're seeing the pricing for data plans come down, access being more widely available, smartphone penetration still increasing in the region. So a lot of factors are making high quality access, high speed access to internet uh, much more within reach of the mass market. Uh, and that enables operators and service providers like us obviously to address this growing audience. Our biggest competitor is probably any other use of leisure time that the consumer has. Uh, consumers get to spend their time on so many things these days, whether it's gaming or sports or outdoor activities or sleeping. Uh, there's so much to do, right? We compete for audience time. That's the biggest competitor we have and our main challenge is to convince our customers to spend some of their precious leisure time or disposable time on Shahid and not elsewhere. Within our segment specifically, there are, um, I'd say, two big categories of players. One are the global players that are either already here or are going to come to MENA in the next few years. And that would include uh, big global operators like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, um, Disney Plus, if and when it comes here, Emma, uh, I mentioned Amazon, but uh, HBO Max, for example, as well. These are big global Western players that ultimately will make their service available in the region. And then you have uh, regional players or local players, and they fall in two categories. One, uh, pure play digital players. Um, I would mention companies like um, View. I would mention companies like Stars Play. Uh, and then you have um, regional players that are similar to us in that they are either telcos or media companies that are uh, getting into the over-the-top video business. So that would include players like um, uh, um, Dubai TV or Kuwait TV that have their own catch-up platforms, uh, but also platforms like Javi, which is a part of Saudi Telecom, for example. Social media platforms I don't necessarily think as direct competitors. Uh, social media and us um, actually have a very symbiotic, productive two-way relationship. Um, NBC Group is one of the largest drivers of uh, video consumption on YouTube and Facebook in the region. We drive over a billion uh, video views for our content on these social media uh, platforms every month. Uh, so uh, you bet that YouTube and Facebook and Snap and Twitter, they, they love our content, they love our audience, and we, uh, we provide some of that content on these platforms. Um, they are not great at uh, or don't necessarily see themselves as competing with us for premium video content. Obviously, YouTube is a, a giant uh, in terms of audience, in terms of consumption and engagement, uh, but most of it is not for content that I would care, can 
um, characterize as necessarily competing with us. Not necessarily the premium type of video content that we offer at Shahid, but more uh, UGC content or premium UGC content. So while it may not be cats on skateboards that drive all the views anymore, uh, I'd say if you look at even the more highly produced content on YouTube, it is not at the quality level of uh, some of the drama, for example, that we offer on Shahid. So I don't think of them as direct competitors. They help us acquire audiences, engage with our audiences, drive them back to our TV channels, and importantly, drive them back to Shahid as well, where we can then convince them to consume more content and ultimately become subscribers to Shahid Plus. Years from now, I believe uh, the industry will still be in its initial growth phase. Uh, I think when it comes to subscription, we'll be at a level of about maybe 10 million total unique subscriptions for SWOT streaming services for premium video in the region, thereabouts. Um, I think the addressable market is going to grow fast, but in reality, um, this is not going to be tens and tens of millions of paid subs by 2024. I don't see that happening. 10 million maybe across all the different providers. Um, and in that sense, we all help each other, by the way. This is really a situation where competition is a very good thing because it, it is really the tie that raises all boats, right? So we welcome competition. We welcome active market participants because in a way we're still building the category in consumers' minds and are creating something new together that hasn't existed before. So I do see about 10 or thereabouts, maybe it's 12, maybe it's a little less, total millions of paid subscribers in the region for premium OTT streaming.